there are a lot of low-cost ventilator designs being put on YouTube and, and various websites right now which are uh, essentially using bellows like using a BVM, a medical inflator, to apply pressure to a lung. A few people have pointed out that there's an issue with that, which is that you can overpressure the lung because there's no pressure control in one of those bags. It's all done manually right now. There's also no volume control with those. That's all done manually by the operator. And there's no humidification right now. Uh, it's only intended for really short-term use in an emergency situation. So this right here, is a principle that can be applied in order to provide uh, pressure regulation, also pressure relief, so you never overpressure. And with a slightly different arrangement, it can also be used to, uh, to provide humidification of the fluid. This whole thing is made using plastic bottles, just like this one. Um, in this case, they're not even actually glued together, just because there's a cone on the top. So I chopped off the top of the bottle, and chopped off the bottom of the bottle and then forced them together and that gives a good seal you can see i've got bits of duct tape holding them together but that's it um, i've also marked on here um, some heights so the water level is at the top there five centimeters ten centimeters fifteen etc um, and here is my fake lung just up at the top this guy I've got plugged in just as calibration. Obviously it doesn't need to be there, but this is just to prove the principle is working. Um, and this is the pressure source. So right now this is just, uh, this is in parallel with the lung. And at the moment, the bottom of this tube, so this tube goes through the cap, which is open. There's a hole in the top of the tube. So this isn't holding pressure, it goes through the cap and uh, comes down to about 35 centimeters there. So what we should see is 35 millibar on this pressure transducer, because that corresponds to 35 uh, centimeters of water pressure. So if I blow in this tube, this guy isn't quite set right, uh, but let's zero that. Oh, it is zero. Um, so I'm just gonna let that dangle for a bit. If I blow in here, what you'll see is that the water level inside the tube will go down. And the water level going down inside this tube corresponds to the pressure being applied to the lung. So in this way, you can measure the pressure that's being applied just using this tubing and some water. Um, what I'll then show you is that it's not possible to apply an overpressure to the lung because when you apply too much pressure, the water comes all the way out of this tube and starts bubbling out. So in this case, the maximum pressure that I can apply is 35 centimeters of water because that's how far down the tube is. If I move the tube up to 20, 20 centimeters of water. If I had a taller column and I moved it down to 50, 50 centimeters of water. So I'll blow into this tube now and you'll see this water level go down. And you will have been able to hear the, uh, the lung expanding as I was applying pressure. Uh, and it never went down below 15, which means it never went above 15 centimeters of water. Uh, so I'll try and apply more pressure now and see what happens. You can see that when I try and apply more pressure, the bubbles come out and so all the pressure rather than going into the lung it comes out through the bubbles in the container and um, let's just see what this guy says if i can hold it up oh my tube has come up a little bit very important thing to fix your tube in the place where you want it, otherwise the pressure will change. T 
two things you saw there. Firstly, the reading on this never went above 30 millibar. And what that means is that this is working. This is providing pressure regulation. Um, the difference between the 35 centimeters of water that I've got in here and the 30 millibar that you see on here, I would probably say is a calibration issue on this guy. This isn't really meant to measure pressures this low. Um, the second thing you will have seen is that water came out of the top of here. That's bad. What that shows is that I was putting in too much pressure, well, too much flow, actually. So uh, the bubbles coming up in here were just causing the level to, to raise and cause water to come out of the top. This can be easily fixed by having this water level lower inside here. So having this whole column taller and having the fill level lower. Um, so what I've just shown you is how, firstly, it can be used as a pressure gauge, just by how far down it goes. That tells you the pressure. Secondly, it can be used as pressure regulation because if you apply a higher pressure to the system, then the excess pressure comes out through this tube. The third thing it can be used for, the humidification. Uh, for that, you would have um, a sealed container here, air inlet dropping down a little bit into the, into the, uh, the water. Not very much because otherwise it's going to provide a pressure uh, resistance, a back pressure, and then a tube coming out of the top. So that all the water goes, all the air goes through the water. For those who have worked in refrigeration systems um, and particularly HVAC systems, you'll know that uh, having a stagnant pool of water with a lot of air flowing through it is a recipe for disaster from a bacterial perspective. So what this needs is uh, boiled water put into it. It needs to be cleaned regularly. Mm. <laughs> Not boiled water put into it because these plastic bottles will melt. It needs uh, uh, sterilizing tablets uh, put into this system. Um, the whole system could be disinfected using uh, some kind of alcohol. But essentially uh, you need to actively control the bacteria that might grow inside this by changing out the water regularly and regularly disinfecting it. Um, so just for a, a quick close-in, there's the lung on a T-piece. That T-piece goes down inside the bottle and it's currently set to 35 centimeters or 35 millibar of pressure. So air is put in through this connector comes out through this connector and will never go above 35 millibar. I hope this helps. So this is what I think the most generic ventilator could look like. Um, we have a pressure source over here and a couple of valves that do timing. These You have to have these valves because you can't have the air coming out this way as well as going in this way. The reason being, you have to maintain your peep pressure. So this is what stops the lung from collapsing. That means that essentially you just have these valves flipping. So whenever this one is on, this one is off. Whenever this one is on, this one is off. So whatever your pressure source is, you have this T coming off, which has an inlet pressure regulation system like the one I showed. And that means that you never get pressure higher than this column of water going down this line. Then have this little humidifier box. This is a sealed box, so that all the air that comes in here has to go out there. Uh, and this is where you increase the humidity. Reason being that if you are intubating somebody, then you're not getting the moisture from their, uh, their nose and throat that you would normally get as people are breathing in. So there's a lot more potential for dehumidifying their lungs. Um, when this outlet valve is flipped, so when this one is closed and this one is open, then the lungs will be collapsed by, uh, well, hopefully not collapsed, they will be compressed by atmospheric pressure. So the air that is inside them will be pushed out. This peak pressure regulator means that the pressure inside the lungs will never go lower than that head of water. So you can set that to whatever you want it to be. This one should be around 35 centimeters, but you might want it to go up as high as 70 or so. This one should be about five centimeters, so much smaller. 
And it's very important that both of these, well, all three of these are kept sterile so that you're not pumping diseases into somebody's lungs. It's also important that these heights are fixed. But essentially all of these things, apart from the valves, can be made with uh, plastic bottles and tubing. So if you have garden hose, this arrangement will work just as well with garden hose as it would with any kind of uh, medical tubing like silicone or Tigon or what, whatever you have to hand. Um, you just need to make sure that you have enough diameter that your flow won't be limited by that diameter. So you can imagine if this was a tiny tube, then you could build up pressure just by having more flow going through this tube. A reason why this is important to show is that because of the nature of these valving, oh, I forgot to mention, I've also got a couple of one-way valves here so that we don't get flow that pushes back water into this system uh, and we don't get water going back through here. Um, so the reason why this is important to show is uh, that it's clear from this that you can't cope with um, uh, with a single line going in and out. You need to have some kind of active valving. Um, this doesn't need to be complicated valving. It can just be opening and closing tubes, which you could do with pinch valves. Whatever you do though, it needs to survive for about 20,000 cycles a day. So your tubing needs to be pretty robust if it's gonna be squeezed that many times. Um, there are lots of different ways of doing this kind of valving. You could do it with an electronic timer, uh, a Raspberry Pi or a, a PLC. Um, you could also do it with a regular rotary input using some cams. Um, you could even do it with a car signal indicator, so uh, a, just a little analog circuit driven off a 12 volt car battery. My hope for this is that it's not, it's not going to replace any uh, ventilators that are being produced right now um, in the UK or in Europe or in, uh, in the US but in places where they don't have ventilators at all, where they don't have the ability to make these things, um, this has potential to be made out of junk that you can find uh, in the trash heap, assuming you wash it first very well, wash it very well. You can make something like this out of plastic bottles, tubing, um, a, uh, a windscreen wiper motor, um, and a few bits of wood uh, just scraps that are tied together. It's possible to make something like this with scraps that you tie together. How you verify this, how you make sure that it's working, is just as important as you have something that works in principle, because you don't want to make something that looks really great on paper, but then something about the implementation, like there's a bad weld or there's a, a slightly leaky section of tubing, means that it's not working as it should, um, and it gets limited performance or even worse, um, it actually ends up causing harm to the patient because that would be the absolute worst thing is to try and intervene in a positive way and actually make things worse. Um, so hopefully people can build on this. Um, I think what's going to be more helpful in the next stage is coming up with a way to verify that a system is functioning correctly.